everyone, welcome to Art of the Unquiet Grave. I'm Ash and today I'm back with another DIY project for you. Um, this one today is going to be the first of two insect taxidermy or etymology taxidermy projects that we're going to be doing. Um, now this is going to be a gaff or faux taxidermy piece, but the first project we're going to do is this little guy right here, if you can see the glare. Um, it's a black and white beetle, and I'll show you the reference pictures of what I based this little guy off of. Um, but he's actually plastic. <laughs> so um, I got a jar of, I think it was 10 different beetles off of Amazon, um, but they didn't look the most realistic. So I'm going to show you how to repaint them into whatever style beetle you like. Um, obviously, they're discovering new beetles every day, so really, the world's your oyster here. <laughs> Um, but I liked him in particular because he reminded me of a Beetlejuice beetle, you know, black and white had some stripes. <laughs> anyway, I've loved Beetlejuice since I was little, so that was the inspiration behind this particular beetle. I'm going to go ahead and jump into how we painted, uh, framed and mounted this little guy here, and then I'll see you at the end for a quick wrap up. Okay, so here's that set of beetles that I got off of Amazon. Um, now, if you go to look on Amazon to purchase a set for yourself, you'll see that there are a number of different fake bug um, and beetle sets on there. But I like this one in particular for the variety that it gave. Uh, you can see here that it has rhinoceros beetles, atlas beetles, and stag beetles. And it also has two different sizes. There's that large size and then these little tiny guys here. Now I did start to dabble with some paints on these. As you can see, there's like that burgundy and uh, green toned beetle. I was um, just playing with some acrylic paints to see how they would uh, dry before I started this video. But when you purchase them off of Amazon, they will just be that black and flat brown shade, just so you know. So after you've chosen your beetles or decided what you're going to do for your project, here's a little tip for you. Um, now, if you are order them off of Amazon, you'll notice that their legs get sort of squished in transit and um, they sort of bent in on themselves. So if you take some boiling water, which is what I'm doing here, and then just submerging the beetles for a few minutes, it'll make that plastic really nice and malleable. And then you can do basically what you would do when you're rehydrating uh, real insects. You can just uh, let them sit in that water for a while until they get soft and their legs get um, more pliable. And then you're gonna put them on a sheet of cardboard and position them the way that you want them to be. You can lay their legs out, their pincers, uh, you know, whatever may have been squashed in transit there. And then once you get them into a shape that you like, you're just going to take some uh, regular old sewing pins and then hold them in place while they're drying and cooling on that cardboard. So here I'm just manipulating the beetles into the shapes that I think that they look the best or that I want them to be in for this project. And then now's the part uh, where you just take the pins and you situate them into the cardboard so they can finish cooling in the configuration that you want them in. Okay, so this is the beetle that I've chosen for our project here. And now that his legs have been cooled and he dried in that, you know, configuration that I liked him in, uh, you're going to do your first layer of um, acrylic paint. Now for this particular project, I liked uh, chalk paint just to do the base coat because it gave a more opaque finish and we're trying to cover up that dark brown black shade that he had on him there. So I'm just going in with a little brush and doing, uh, I think I ended up doing two, maybe three coats of that white just to get everything nice and uniform before I added the, the black detailing back in. So here's the second coat. And you'll probably want to do a white base coat if you end up doing any brighter colors, um, anything other than that dark black that it has on there, just to give you a nice clean canvas to work with.
Now, for some reason, they gave these beetles, like, these red eyes. I'm assuming it's to make them look scarier, but obviously that's a little jarring and it looks unrealistic. So I just went ahead and covered everything in that white until it was completely masking what we originally started with. And then now's the fun part. You can sort of do whatever you like for the design, but uh, like I said, I was basing this off of a beetle picture that I saw that I thought was like a reminiscent of a Beetlejuice <laughs> beetle. So I did play with this for a while until I got like a pattern that I felt resembled it, um, even though I took some creative liberties here. <laughs> But on top here, I'm just taking a black satin paint. Um, and again, it started with like a dark, a very dark brown shade, although it was kind of reading black on camera. So since there are so many, I mean, countless really, different types of beetles, this is where you get to really have fun with it and play with your designs and decide how you want your beetle to look. So here I'm just sort of stippling on the black around the the antenna and the pincers. Um, and I'm trying to get like a little bit of a fade or like a, a gradient effect because you can see in the um, initial reference picture, there's not a whole lot of clean lines. So here I took some white and I just added some shading to his head. Now I'm going back over that with a darker black and that white has like a pearlescent sheen to it, if you will. So I'm trying to kind of mimic that um, duochrome, multi-chrome finish that beetles often have. Even though this is a black and white beetle, they still have that um, iridescence to them. And now I'm doing um, some little tiny pseudo polka dots, I guess, and I'm just sort of filling it in. Um, until I feel like it looks like kind of an organic um, configuration or like clustering. So I played with this for a while, but I did have a lot of fun. <laughs> So here's the shadow box that we're going to be using. It's just a very plain standard shadow box. I got these in a set of, I think it was six shadow boxes off of Amazon. So here I'm using a wall decal that I got from the Dollar Tree. Um, you can see it has a nice embossed like raised texture to it. So we're going to be using that for the backdrop. So it was an adhesive back so I just took it and stuck it to the back of that board um, from the shadow box. But for our purposes here even though this is very pretty I didn't want it to compete with the beetle too much. Um, so that had that obviously very shiny copper gold um, which was was quite lovely, but because our beetle is black and white and I tend to operate with a very limited color palette, I'm going to be painting it burgundy. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing here. I'm just going over that um, adhesive wall decal and painting it a sort of eggshell, I guess, finish uh, burgundy. I'm just trying to knock back some of those brush strokes here since that had so much texture to it. It was picking up a lot of brush strokes. So I did put, I think, two coats on that and then just sort of took my time with the final coat to smooth everything out. Now this is just a little uh, die cut wood frame that we're going to be using just as a little added point of visual interest for a beetle. And I'm taking some of that all-in-one folk art um, satin black paint that I love so very much and I'm just painting it black. Shocking, I know. <laughs> I 
Okay, so then once that dried, I'm just taking some tacky glue and I'm just running that around the whole um, perimeter of the frame there. And I'm just centering that on our um, shadow box frame. And then again, more tacky glue, uh, just to the beetle on the bottom there. And we're situating him right in the middle to center. Now, I don't think I mentioned this or if I got footage of it, but I did add a little bit of a silver highlight on the frame itself that you can see in this image here. So that tacky glue dries clear, and then this is our finished product. Okay, so that's how we made our little faux beetle taxidermy. I hope you guys liked it. Um, now there's very few bugs in this world that I'm not terrified of. <laughs> uh, I happen to love beetles. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but I actually have scarab tattoos as well. Um, and the other one that I love are is butterflies. So the next episode that we'll be doing will be a faux butterfly taxidermy project. So please stay tuned for that. I hope you like it. Um, uh, and don't forget, after we're done with our taxidermy pieces this month, October is going to be all about skeletons. So if, if that's more your cup of tea, don't worry. I have you covered there. Uh, stay tuned till October, and we'll be doing lots of spooky skeleton projects coming your way. All right. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.